All right, so let's review for this quiz, 12.3 and 12.6. It's not through, it's just these two because we skipped four and five, okay? Uh, let's do one like this. So we're, uh, let's do the area, 12.3 is area. So let's do that. So let's say you have a triangle that looks something like this. Do you remember the two um, formulas? Yeah. Yeah, like I said, this is not one that I have like Pythagorean theorem, at any time of the year, you could stop me and say, what's the Pythagorean theorem? And I could give it to you very easily. But these right here are not ones that, for some reason, like stick in my head all year round, okay? But you do need to know them for this quiz, though, all right? So that's going to be very helpful because, look, to find the area of this thing, you would have to bring this down, get a right angle, and you might be able to do it, okay? You'd probably be able to find the height. And, and, you, and you could, right? Everybody see that? You take this down perpendicular to here, right? This is the opposite side. That would be the height, okay? And you've got the hypotenuse, so you could use the sine of this angle, and you could find the height. This is the base. So yeah, you could do it without these formulas, but these formulas are kind of helpful. So if you had this, if you had a situation where you had side angle side, do you remember that? Do we have that situation here? Yeah, absolutely. We got a side, we got an angle in between, and we got a side. So if you have a if you have that, then you could use this formula: one half b c sine of a equals. Let me give myself some more room. B um, one half what? Instead of see how this is b c and this is a. So what if I go sine of b? What would these two be? A c and that also. Well, let's just do this. down, bring this over here like that, just give myself some room, and what would the next one be? One half, again, this would be sine of what? Angle C, because there's my A, there's my B, there's my C, so what are these two going to be? A and B, all right? And we're not going to use all three, very similar to the law of what? This looks kind of similar to, we just did it, law of sines, where you got three things that are equal to each other, yeah? And now what you have on law signs? Sure. And uh, so let's do it. So um, what do you want to call this? Call this A, call this B. What, what's this one? This would be angle A, this would be angle B. So what would this angle be? It would be C, all right? It doesn't matter what you call them, all right? You can call it anything, but that's what I would do right there. So what are we going to do? It's one half, what? These two, A times B, 18 oops, 18 times 20 times what? The sine of the angle, 38. That's still going to give you the same thing as if you would have dropped this. Watch this. If you would have dropped this down like this, would you agree? Yes? This is opposite, correct? All right? Or we'll call it H for the height. Now watch. Now, what are you going to do with this, by the way? Put it into the calculator, and you get an answer, correct? And let me see what that answer is. Um, 110.8. Somebody do that on a calculator. You got 110.8? Okay, good. 110.8. It is area, right? Area equals that. So it's square whatever it is. Let's see. Do I even give units? Yep. It was centimeters. I just didn't put it on there. So centimeters, so this would be what? Centimeters squared, because it's area, all right? But we could have done it like this. We could have used it with just regular trig functions. So I want to find the height, correct? Because what's the area of a triangle? It's one half the what? The base times the height. So I've got one half. I already know the base. What's the base of this triangle? It's 20. And then I just got to figure out what the height is, correct? So, oops, let's figure out what the height is. So I got to find H. How do I do that? I'm going to use this angle right here. This is opposite. Now I'm not going to use 20. 
because 20 is not the length of the bottom of this right triangle. Everybody see that? 20 goes from here all the way to here. So if I'm trying to find the height just by regular trig stuff, I'm not going to use the 20. What am I going to use? Opposite over hypotenuse. And what trig function is opposite over hypotenuse? Opposite over hypotenuse? Sine. Sine. So, so, S-O-H. Ka, C-A-H, cosines adjacent over hypotenuse, and toa. What's toa? Opposite over toa? Adjacent. Okay, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what's the sign? Opposite over hypotenuse. So that's one we're going to use, right? This is, this is the opposite, even though it's H. It's H is for height. Everybody right, understand that, right? So we've got opposite over hypotenuse. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to the sine of what? 38 equals the opposite, which is H, over the hypotenuse, which is 18. Solve for H. Multiply both sides by 18. So H is equal to what? 18 times the sine of 38. So let's put it right here. What is the height? There's one half. There's base. What's the height? It's 18 times the sine of 38. Look at this. Isn't this the exact same thing as this? It's not. It's exactly the same. Okay, just because the order is different, it's still the same. 3 times 5, 5 times 3, it's exactly the same, isn't it? Right? Because it equals the same exact number, 15. All right? So this and this are exactly the same. So you could have done it this way if you wanted to. It's perfectly fine. Or this is a little bit more streamlined. Wouldn't you agree? You know what I mean? It's just, it's all there for you. All you got to do is just plug the numbers in. Right? right here, you had to think a little bit. You had to drop down the hypotenuse, or not the hypotenuse, you had to drop down the height. Okay, then you had to look at it and figure out which trig function are we going to use opposite over hypotenuse, which is the sine. So there was a little bit more you had to do with this. This is, this is made, the reason that they give you this formula is so, it's just streamlined. All you got to do is just plug numbers into the formula. But the problem is you got to do what? You got to know the formula, okay? That's part of the problem on this one, all right? So if you know the formula, it's really easy to use. And you would get the same exact thing right here right so you don't have to do it both ways okay that's not why I did this I did this just to show you you could do it just by your regular trig functions even if you didn't remember this so if you come in tomorrow and the quiz is tomorrow so Hunter if you're watching this the quiz is tomorrow so tomorrow is what Thursday the 9th May 9 okay I originally said it was going to be on Friday the 10th but I changed it today because we would just have a wasted day. We're ready to take it, okay? So um, we will take it tomorrow, which is Thursday. Everybody good? All right, so hopefully Hunter's watching this. He said he would, so we'll see. All right, everybody good with that one? What about this one? Now again, you'll see this on the quiz, but the numbers might be different. This probably won't be 18, this probably won't be 20, this probably won't be 38 degrees. All right, so, but the math is pretty much the same. So just make sure you know how to do that. Make sure you have that formula memorized. All right, uh, let's do another one. Let me see which one I want to do. All right, let's just do this one, might as well. So, got this, that, that, all right, and then, yeah. All right, they tell you the whole bot. they put a 40 right there, but what is, what is the 40? Does it mean it's half of it? No, it means it's the whole thing, right? It's the whole base. And what else do we have? They tell you. They split this up like this, and they say this is 30, and this is 30. So you could just say what? The whole thing is 60. Yeah. So they, they say this is 30 degrees. They say this is 30 degrees. So obviously the whole thing is what? 60 degrees. Okay? And they don't really tell you, like, that these two angles are equal to each other. They do tell you that that is perpendicular. All right? And you've got to find the area 
of this. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to see how you would use it with the stuff that they just gave you. Is there a problem like this on the homework, on the area? Look through it. Do you have the book open? Okay. Which number was that? 15? Okay, I just want to look to see how they did it. Oh, okay, I see what they did. I was... I needed a little help there, so I got it. So, look, if this is this is a thirty, I see why they said that this is thirty degrees now. All right, because if this is ninety and this is thirty, what's this angle down here going to be? It's going to be sixty. Remember, I said they didn't tell you that the sides were equal to each other, um, but we could figure that out though. So, if that's sixty, then what's this down here? Again, you got a thirty what sixty ninety triangle, so that's sixty. So, what's true about all three of these sides then? Right, it's equal. It's an equilateral triangle. It might not look like it. I didn't really draw it to scale, and it doesn't even look to scale on the quiz. Okay, but, um, and does it look like it on the homework? Yeah, it looks a little more like it on the homework. But go by the numbers. Don't go by just what it looks like. All right, so there you go. So you do have an equilateral triangle. So do you remember the other formula that we learned? The other formula, remember that Heron's formula? formula? That's when you have side, side, side. And when I was first looking at that, that's why I paused a little bit, had to look in the book. Um, I should have seen it right away, but I didn't. But now I do. All right, so when you have a side, 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 do you remember what the formula is? Area equals, here it is, I'll show it to you. You gotta memorize it, so study it tonight. Big old square root, so S. What does the S represent? S is the what? The semi-perimeter, what does that mean? Half of the perimeter, exactly right. Okay, so that's half of the perimeter. Um, so if they tell you this is 40, what's the side right here? That's 40, what's the side right here? That's 40 because it's an equal angular triangle, which means it's equilateral, right? Which means all three sides are equal to each other. So let's just find the S right now. So S is equal to what? 40, 40, 40 is what? 120, but then and you wanna find, that's the whole perimeter. What's half of the perimeter then? 60, right. Everybody see that? All right, so that's what the S is going to represent. But I'm just going to write the formula. And then it's S minus A. A is one of the sides. Then it's S minus B. That's one of the other sides. And then it's S minus C. Whoops, yeah, that's good enough. Which is the third side. So now you just plug everything into this formula. And then you can get the area of this. If you wanted to, you could use what you know about 30, 60, 90 triangles. You could find the height of it. Do you see that? So you could find the height, and the height is the longer leg, right? Then you got to know stuff about the longer leg. What is that? That's square root of 3 times the shorter leg, right? So the shorter leg is 20, so that would be 20 square root of 3. You could do that, all right? Almost do it in my head. But again, this is a little more streamlined. Maybe this is a little bit easier. Maybe you like the 30, 60, 90 triangles and you'd rather do it that way. And it's fine. You don't have to do it with this formula. But this formula, I think, makes it a little easier because you find one little thing, the semi-perimeter, which, which was easy. We found the perimeter, which is 120. What's the semi-perimeter? Half of it, so it's 60, okay? And now you can just plug the numbers in. So that's 60 times what? 60 minus one of the sides, which is 40, and then another 60 minus 40, and then another 60 minus 40. Why are they all 40s? Because the triangle is an equilateral triangle. That's right. Okay? Everybody with me on that? Somebody want to do the math on that? Okay. 692.8, is that what you got? Yeah, that would be nice. People got calculators, right? Pull them out. Punch some numbers in. It's not that hard. Uh, 
Did you get it? Do the square root at the end. So this is, don't put 60 minus 40, because you know what that is. What is that? That's 20, and that's 20, and that's 20. So 2 times 2 times 2 is what? Huh? 2 times 2 times 2. It's 8, and then 3 zeros, that's 8,000. So 8 times 6 is what? 48, and then you got another 0, right? You could do that all in your head, right? And then take the square root of that, and hopefully you get 692.8. Yes? No? Anybody try it? You tried it? Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, it might be. It might be. All right? If you want to do, did you understand what I was talking about when I talked about the um, 30, 60, 90 thing? No, I'm just saying, like, I think if you can do it that way, you can make it like the square root of the guy. It's easier than doing all that. What extra? Like doing all that in your head? Yeah. What? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 with 3 zeros. 8 times 6 is 48. Stick another 0, so it's 48 and 4 zeros. It's not hard. I'd do that in 3 seconds it took me. And then take the square root. Yeah, but I did it in 3 seconds. By the time you pulled out your calculator and started punching those numbers in, I could have done that in my head before you even punched those numbers in. That's true, but then you got one number to stick in a calculator. 48 and 4 zeros, stick it in the square root, boom, you're done. Right? All right. I don't know. That Maybe that's just me. All right? You don't have to be that smart. Okay, believe me, I'm not that smart. Okay, But you can go 2 times 2 times 2 times 6, can't you, in your head? Should be able to, right? 8 times 6. Yeah? All right. All right, enough of that. You could have done it this way. Let's do it this way just to see if that would work. What did I say this is right here? Remember, that's, the short side is 20, right? This is the long leg. So what is the long leg? You remember that? The long leg is equal to the square root of what? Three times the short leg, all right? So what's this? This is 20 square root of three. So how do you find the area of a triangle? It's one half, the base. What's the base of this whole triangle? It's 40 times the height. We just found the height. Basically in our head, we found the height. What is it? 20 square root of three. So put that in your calculator. Angela, put that in your calculator and see if you get the same thing. I hope you do, because if you don't, then I gotta figure out what we did wrong. Stop. You don't need to mess with it. There's no reason to mess with it right now. All right, who's calculating this? Is it same thing? Good. Same decimal and everything? Yeah, probably is. So there you go. Do you like this way better? Do you like this way better? You choose, all right? It's up to you, okay? I mean, this is the stuff that we're supposed to learn in this section, so it's, it'd be nice if you know how to do it this way, but if you want to do it that way, perfectly fine. Okay, enough of that. I think, oh, there's one more of these area ones. When are we out of here? Less than a minute. Well, it, this one's the same thing. They give you three sides of a triangle, so again, they give you three sides. That's side, side, side. So which one are we going to use? We're going to use that Heron's formula thing, okay? So what's the area? Let's do it real quick. Watch this. What's the area? It's S times what? S minus A, S minus B, and S minus C, all right? And that's it. Now, we have some trig stuff on there, too, okay? We didn't cover that, all right? Not trig necessarily, but what? Law of... Cosines, so you got you guys acted like you really knew this stuff, so I'm not going to cover it. Everybody's good with that? And law of what? The signs. Watch the video. If you weren't here, if you were sleeping during it or something, then um, watch the video. That's going to be on the quiz as well. Everybody good? All right.